Greetings and welcome to bnd.biz. My name is Alan Thorne and in this tutorial we're going to be looking at how to get rigid bodies working inside a 3D scene. It's a really easy process here in Godot and I'll show you exactly how we do that. Take a look at the editor. You can see we have a beautiful Van Gogh inspired 3D scene here, a complete bedroom scene. We have the ability to navigate around that scene and to take a look around. But right now, there are no physical obstacles in the scene. I know it looks like there is, but really, in the world of Godot, there isn't. If you take a look at the Scene tab over here, you can see we have our bedroom mesh. This is the complete environment. But if we were to put physical obstacles inside this scene that fell to the ground under the effects of gravity, they would in fact fall through the floor. There aren't actually any physical obstacles in this scene right now. We need to get all of that stuff set up. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how we can create 3D objects like cubes and primitives, put them inside this scene, and everything is going to understand that these are physical obstacles and are going to take effect. So cube objects, for example, are going to bounce on this bed or they're going to hit the floor or hit these chairs and recognize that they are physical obstacles. So in this tutorial, let's see how without any code at all, we can set up this scene to work beautifully with the physics system. So here inside Godot, we've created this Van Gogh inspired scene. Now, firstly, I should credit the creator of this scene, this beautiful scene here, this is downloaded from Sketchfab and I'm just going to bring up the link so that you can see that here inside a web browser window. This is the Sketchfab asset. You can move down in the view here to see we have Van Gogh Room and you have the link up here that you can use to download that asset. And you can download and import this into pretty much any 3D engine that you want. I've imported it here into Godot. If you're not sure how to import Sketchfab assets into Godot, then please do check out our Sketchfab tutorial right here on bnd.viz, completely free of charge on YouTube. I'm going to minimize Chrome here to go back to our scene in Godot. Everything's been set up. You can see that the bedroom environment is one complete mesh. We can easily see what the mesh looks like simply by clicking on the perspective viewport here inside the editor, scrolling down to display wireframe, and I can see the wireframe mesh for that bedroom scene. It's actually a pretty simple mesh structure here. The polygon count is pretty low, and yet the scene is looking great. I'm gonna go back to our normal view here to show the complete environment. Now, right now, the problem with this scene is that it is a mesh and only a mesh. There's no collision information. The physics system doesn't recognize that this world is a solid world. So if we were to put a rigid body, that is a physical object that can move around the scene, if we were to put that inside this room, it would do things like walk through doors, walk through walls, and other physical obstacles. We, of course, we don't want that. So let's set up this environment to work well with physical obstacles. The first thing that I want to do is to select the entirety of the environment. So that's this bedroom object here, a bedroom node. If you're working with a different environment, then just select that environment. If your environment is composed from multiple objects, then you may need to repeat this process multiple times. But in this case, we're going to select the one single environment and then from the menu here, choose Mesh. And there's different options we can choose, but I'm going to be choosing Create Tri-Mesh Static Body. And here's the reason why. First of all, the word static simply means that this object is never going to move or change during gameplay. And that accounts for many environmental obstacles like walls, ceilings, floors. The Tri-Mesh part means that it's going to, that is Godot, is going to look at our mesh, look at all the vertices, polygons, and it's going to use that to figure out how to build the collision information. I'm going to select Create Tri-Mesh Body. Now, in doing that, take a look at what happens. Firstly, inside the scene viewport here, we can see the blue collision mesh, the wireframe for that, generated around the environment. 
you can see in doing that here under the bedroom node that two objects have been created. One is the static body node. This tells Godot here that this object is never going to move during gameplay. And then we have the second node, the collision shape node. And this actually contains all of the collision data for this object. Now what Godot has actually gone and done is because this is a tri-mesh, it has basically duplicated the original mesh here, but instead of using that mesh for rendering, it is using it to define the collision properties of this environment. Now, this is a pretty good choice to make if your environment is low poly and you need your collisions to be super accurate. If you don't need either of those things or if those two things simply don't apply, then you're better off using the convex option here. When I choose the bedroom mesh and choose mesh, I'm better off choosing the convex static body. In this case, the generated mesh will not allow concave sections. That is geometry that caves in on itself. It won't allow that. It will reduce or it will result in less accurate collisions, but better performance. In this case, I'm going to stick with the tri-mesh body option. So that's great. Now let's add a physical obstacle to the scene, an object that is going to move around and collide. To do that, I'm going to use a basic primitive. So I'm going to move to the root node here, right click, choose add child node, or I could choose control A or command A on the keyboard to add that. I'm going to type mesh and I'm going to select mesh instance and choose create. Now by default, this creates a completely empty object. It's just a gizmo here. The reason for that is because if you take a look at the mesh instance node here, we don't actually have any mesh plugged into the mesh field. I'm going to click on the drop down and choose new cube mesh to make this a cube. Now by default, the cube here that I have created is, well, it's too big. Now I could move over here to the transform and change the scale. I'm not going to do that just yet. First of all, I'm going to set up the collisions for this object. So I'm going to make this object a rigid body. A rigid body is an object that will be affected by gravity and can collide with different obstacles in the scene. Rigid bodies are physical obstacles that move. So now with the cube selected, we're going to make this a rigid body. To do this, I'm going to first move over here to the hierarchy or to the scene tab. I'm going to right click and choose add node and then I'm going to add a rigid body node. So I'm just going to type rigid body into the search field and add the rigid body node and then choose create to add the rigid body node. Now I'm going to move the rigid body all the way out here just for ease of selecting and seeing this just one second. So I'm going to move this out to here. I'm going to rename this RG for rigid body and then I'm just going to call that box for rigid body box. I'm going to then select the mesh here inside the scene. This is the cube mesh, the positively enormous cube mesh that we created. And I want to create collision data for this mesh. By default, this is just a mesh. And again, like the environment, Godot doesn't recognize this as a solid object. We can fix that by choosing mesh. We have the option of a tri-mesh collision sibling or a convex collision sibling. Now in this case, it's a cube, so it's a convex shape by default. I'm simply going to select create convex collision sibling here, and it creates collision data for this cube. Now you can see that actually it's created the collision information all the way over here outside of the cube itself. So again, I'm going to just move this way off over here somewhere, pretty much close to the rigid body. I'm going to grab the mesh and move this over here. So we actually have three different things. We have the rigid body object. This is the object that, that Godot here classifies as a movable. We have the collision data for the cube and then the mesh itself. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our collision shape here, the collision data, and I'm going to grab the mesh instance and make that a child. I'm going to select the mesh instance and move to its transform properties and reset its location back to 0, 0, 0. This is exactly on top of the collision data. Now the reason that I want to do this is because soon when the collision shape 
when that rotates around the level, the mesh is going to rotate with it. So it's going to rotate in sync with the collision data so that frame by frame, this collision properties and this mesh are always going to be exactly lined up. Now I'm going to take the collision data and make that a child of the rigid body and select the collision shape. And again, for the properties of here, I'm going to make sure that they line up so that the location of the rigid body, the collision mesh and the mesh instance, they are all exactly one on top of the other. Now the next thing I'm going to do is grab the rigid body here and I'm going to make sure I select the rigid body and I might make this a little bit smaller by temporarily moving to the transform field and changing the scale. It may display a small warning here, but for our purposes, I'm just going to leave that as it is. It's giving me a warning because of the scale, but in this case for this convex shape, that will be absolutely fine. I'm going to move this into the scene and just move this slightly over the bed. I might move it just to the edge here so that when it falls, will it hit the bed or will it fall on the floor? Now let's take a look inside the game here. So we can see this physics take effect. I'm going to press play on the toolbar. And there you have it. We have a box that has fallen onto the bed and then fallen onto the floor. Let's make this more interesting by grabbing the cube and duplicating it with Control D or Command D on a Mac. And I'm going to add a few more instances of the cube so that we can see the cubes bumping into each other and taking effect. I'm going to grab this one here. And actually, I might change the scale for that one a little bit. Grab this one and maybe change the size of that as well. And move that slightly. In fact, I'm going to move that one up. And then grab this one, duplicate that. Move that down, move that here. And maybe scale that one like so and then press play on the toolbar to see the total range of effects this is going to have and there we are we have a whole different range of boxes that have fallen to the ground collided with each other you can see this one is even still slipping there that's fallen down and that's fallen down we have a whole selection of physical obstacles placed right here into this 3d environment and everything is falling around just as we would expect it to under the effects of gravity. Now, I should mention that we can still tweak some of the properties of gravity. You're not just stuck with believable real world gravity. You can tweak those properties even further. And I just quickly want to show you how you can do that right here inside the Godot editor. You move to the menu up here and you choose project and then choose project settings. If you scroll down quite a bit further, pretty close to the bottom, in fact, here under the physics section. We can move to the 3D specific section because we're using 3D physics in this case and we can change some of these properties. For example, we have the default gravity vector or rather the default gravity property which is currently set to 9.8. And then we have the default gravity vector. Now these values here inside the gravity vector are multiplied by the default gravity. So you can see in the case of our gravity vector on the y-axis, the value is negative 1. Which means that when we run this level, our strength or the strength of the gravity is negative 1 multiplied by 9.8. Let's take a look at what happens if I set the default gravity to 0. When I set it to 0 and press play on the toolbar, you can see here that actually gravity has been suspended. So if we want to remove gravity completely, all we need to do is to change the default gravity vector. I could, of course, move over to here and choose that to 1 if I wanted to slow down gravity. I could, in fact, make this naught point, for example, 3. We're going to have significantly slower gravity. It's still going to take effect, but it's going to be a lot slower. And there we've changed the strength of gravity. I could, of course, go back to our gravity vector and then change it to 1. That is 1 instead of negative 1. And in this case, we have boxes that are moving way, way up to the ceiling. 
Let's change that back this time to maybe 0 0.2 and see what happens here. This time again, the boxes are still going to move up, but not so quickly. And they're hitting the ceiling and colliding all the way up there. I'm going to go back to the project panel and reset our gravity back to its default values. That is 9.8 and negative 1 on the y axis. So here we've seen a great example of how we can take an environment, apply a tri-mesh to it to create collision data, and then create a rigid body for an object like a cube and have that interact with the environment. This is a really important skill to be able to quickly create collision data for your objects so they can react believably for your 3D games. This has been bnd.biz. I've been Adam Thorne. I hope you found this tutorial on getting rigid bodies to work in Godot helpful. I'll see you next time.